99 bottles, bottles of, of beer, beer on, on the wall. wall. 99, 99 bottles of beer. beer. <laughs> Take one down, pass it around. 98, 99, bottles, 98 of bottles of beer on the wall. We already started drinking at the doll booth here at CMPX. And I was a CMPX or is it Simpex? What is it, Thomas? Is like, how do you call it? Uh, this, we call it Simpex. Canadian Mechanical and Plumbing Exposition. Yeah, I had to make a yeah. notation yesterday when I was doing shows at the social hub there that uh, today's show we're going to talk about the P and CMPX because I feel there's a lot of mechanical going on on right. this show which is great listen i'm not dismissing mechanical guys uh but i mean we can't forget the plumbing guys for like, sure got to put them all together but uh it was a, it was an interesting first day this is the first day that you're coming yeah, here first right day, yeah. you've been to this show several times right no this is my first this is time. first time yeah believe it or not yeah. man i've been to this show more I times know. than an actual proper hvac plumbing <laughs> person like what's going on here why am i, I spending so much time well johnny first of all welcome to the show thank you thank we're you recording at the doll booth here which is great everyone can find this uh at booth number 903 903 Nine zero three doll booth. We're gonna have lots of fun. I think they're giving away a car today. No, no car gave away today. No, that's uh, Mikey D Martino is giving away a Lamborghini. <laughs> Mikey D Martino. That's right. He's giving away a, a car. Look him up. DM him. Mention my name. Uh, I'm gonna get in trouble now. But uh, Brento Plumbing. Yes, Brento sir. Mechanical Plumbing. Plumbing and mechanical. Plumbing and mechanical. Yeah. Why is the plumbing before the mechanical? Why? Yeah. Just my, my thought at the time. <laughs> How long have you been doing the trade? Ten years now. 10 years, eh? You're yeah. a young guy. How young are you? 29. Baby, man. Like, it's on today's nursery episode. Like, this is... Wow, you guys are kids, man. Yeah. I'm 52. Wow. Why? Why did you choose it? Uh, I grew up in a family of blue-collar workers. Some In the trade? In, in the mechanical? The trade, yeah. Okay. Electrical. Okay. Plumbers. And I always want to do, you know, a trade. I was always kind of handy as a kid. And then, uh, I had, like I said, like, entrepreneurs in my family. So, I was, that was always my goal. Yeah. Yeah. What was the first lesson that you learned about the trade? What was the first, I guess, just like, you know what? I like that. I want to get into this industry. First lesson? I've always kind of been interested. I, I was that kid, like, trying to build stuff at the house, like, okay. with a hammer and stuff like that. Like, no, nothing plumbing related. I found out I wanted to do plumbing. Uh, I was in high school, and they did, uh, you know, you do the tour of the colleges. Yeah. And they let you try to solder. And then the solder joint I did was like mint. Like it was like the most perfect joint ever. But I was there because I wanted to be electrical. Okay. And uh, But you were just fascinated by the solder joint. Yeah, I did a good job. He's like, oh, maybe you'll be a plumber one day. And then uh, that's kind of what happened. Yeah. Were you just in awe that you just watched this? I was this, like, I felt so cool. Like just, everyone else was like right burning around. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So everyone else's samples were just going black and, yeah, and yeah. that was it? Yeah, teach, like this nudging me, like good job. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is for me. Was it, was it luck at that very first time? For sure. Complete luck. Oh, yeah, like you just later on. In, everything lined up When perfectly. the apprenticeship started a couple of years later. Then it uh, became black. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> black and red and then too hot <laughs> and then bring the pliers yeah, and all this other stuff. 100%. But that was like what, in your teenage years? Yeah, I was 17 at the time, yeah. Were or you, 16, maybe. Were you, like, nervous that you're, like, blowtorch and then materials mm. flux? Not really. I thought it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was always into, like, science and, like, you know, that kind of stuff. So I was, like, experimenting and whatever. So, yeah. So did it feel like when you started doing the trade, I guess specifically with mechanical or plumbing, even, I guess, electrical as well, too, that all those little science blurbs that were being expressed during the classes were kind of coming back to you yeah they, like yeah. you were picking it up like yeah. you're trying to figure out metals you're trying to figure out heat exactly you're trying to figure out what what works best yeah. and, and all this other it takes stuff. time though to yeah. like get the grasp of it someone can tell you a bunch of things you know but actually school is what made it all click for me because you don't know why you're doing certain things right and then you go to school and then it's more you know on, when you're on the job you're working 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 yeah, yeah, production yeah. more or less right yeah. but when you you know have your time to think about it and you know so you were hooked as soon as that hooked. happened yeah. you were hooked at yeah, that yeah. point i loved it yeah and then what did you do i guess well hang on a sec share your information too right so on ig yeah it's a uh, brento plumbing inc on instagram okay and uh, brento plumbing.ca is my website and then they'll reach you an email if they want to get a hold of you yeah john at brento plumbing.co okay and then obviously you know all about doll so doll valve doll valve yeah. is it doll valve.com yep. mm -hmm. but also you could follow them on ig under doll doll it's just doll, at doll valve, but then there's also at doll valve man. That's right, the man, the man, <laughs> the myth, the legend. <laughs> All right, so that was the beginning part of it, and then you got hooked at that point. Did you think to yourself, "How am I going to get into this industry?" It, or was it, it already being? It happened laid? by accident because I originally wanted to be an electrician. Then I uh, the company shut down, so I was trying to find a job. Why did you 
think that you were going to go electrical because you had an opportunity? Well, I had family that were electricians. They are so electrical the contractors. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so I started, I started, I did my uh, co-op in school with electrical. Okay. And then, uh, anyways, I worked for one year as an apprentice um, doing electrical. The company shut down, couldn't find a job, couldn't find a company to take me on. So I just worked a couple random jobs and I got in with a general contractor who were uh, plumbers by trade. Okay. And we kind of did like everything. Like they used to buy houses, flip them, like yeah. build second stories. Yeah. We used to do a lot of commercial. And then... Uh, so you, you got a really like wide range of education at that yeah, point. Yeah. You're going all over the place, yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. So you're doing all the commercial stuff. You're doing the residential stuff. Yeah, you're doing industrial. Stuff. Yeah. Industrial even yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Process piping and everything. Yeah. Got that must have been a weird kind of thing at the beginning where you're just like, it, what's at, all this about? At the time, I, it was throwing me off because I was worried that I wouldn't be good at one of the things because I was doing everything. So I thought, oh, maybe like by the time I'm licensed, I'm not going to be able to rough in a house because I'm spending so much time doing this commercial and industrial. It's the actual, it's the other way around. Exactly. No, I found that out yeah. afterwards. So I was so grateful that I got to experience everything after because I was so well-rounded, right? Like I went to school and met so many people that only do one thing, right? Yeah. So yeah, I didn't have that experience at all. Would you recommend going down that same path for any new kid that's starting out? Or I mean, because you get a lot of kids nowadays, and that's why the kids come to these shows, right? Yeah. Because they want to see what the right path is. And a lot of them take the, and I'm not, like, the schools are great. like yeah, And the ed instructors sure. are great. Everybody's great. I think what's really important is, is the kids finding a clear path and try to get as few distractions as possible because they could get veered off and maybe be educated by someone that's not really showing them the right way, right? Right. I mean... I find I think I was I always work for smaller companies and they usually do a lot more stuff versus like I met tons of guys that like work for a big guy and like once you're good at something that's what you're doing you're stuck so, for that so you don't get to touch other stuff right yeah. so it's hard to I, I wouldn't be able to advise how to kind of you know get into touching everything or like how to start off that way but that should be your goal anyway right I've heard so many stories about guys doing high rise and commercials you're getting on the you're such a small fish. And, and, and then, I mean, it's like no pun to your name or anything like that, but guys have expressed it like you're the bathtub Johnny. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? That's all you do yeah. Monday to Friday, right. you bathtub 100%. install, and you do that for years. And I'm like, I can't even fathom that. I can't, I, I don't understand I've how worked, you do that. You know, I, before I went on my own, I worked for a you know, commercial contractor and they would hire guys from the hall. I was in the union and they would be guys that were on high rise sites for like five years, their whole apprenticeship pushing a broom and then they're licensed somehow. I don't know how they pass the test. They come to the site and they can't hang a piece I'm of not, cast iron. I'm plate. not knocking it, but it's just like trades are all about trying to absorb as much as possible, right? Yeah, but you got the lazy aspect of it too. Of like course. Some guys just want to get industry. by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They want to punch the clock in. They come in. They're happy to be the bathtub guy. For or sure. Or the toilet guy or yeah. whatever it is. But, but that stuff doesn't fly as much in the private sector versus when you're in the union, right? So. But I mean, okay, so let's talk about the private sector because you're getting a lot of challenges now. You're getting clients that are asking for... <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, plumbing is just going really extreme now. And right. I'm talking about technology-wise and just like it's no more, you know, two bolts and drop in a, to a no. toilet now. You're learning constantly. Yeah. I get calls all the time for like these, you know, like electronic shower valves and all this like nuanced stuff. Right? Are you completely like nervous? Are you? No, because I that's how I learned in the, the first The manuals place. are getting thicker though, Johnny. Like, like I remember manuals being two pages. No, I know. Right. But obviously, there's you got to be careful, you know, like you got to... Make sure you're spending your time correctly kind of thing, right? But no, I'm not too nervous. I, I like it. It's, it's fun to learn new stuff and, you know, you just dive into it. If you don't know necessarily what, how to do it, you're going to learn along the way. And then you'll, the next you'll time you'll meet someone be that has that done it once before sure. and then they'll give you their two cents and they'll also give you their, their opinion about if they like it or not. But 100%. I mean, there's a lot of, I guess, creature comforts, like mm -hmm. a lot of, I guess you're probably seeing a lot of clients asking for, obviously heated floors are happening in all yeah. tiles now. Uh, heated walls are now becoming a thing in bathrooms. Right. Now you're getting lighting in the shower niches. But then, I mean, I think it's almost becoming standard heated seats on toilets. Yeah. You're getting the digital valves on all the showers now and mm -hmm. you're getting more people trying to figure out the math. Like it's, it's almost like you guys as plumbers are becoming electricians when they're doing load calculations. You guys are doing volume calculations, right. trying to figure out how much flow you can get out of this house and exactly. how much heads you can put in there because I guess clients just want as many heads as possible in a shower yeah, application. They like the fancy stuff, yeah. But yeah, they also, you know, they want to drive the EV, but they're just sucking all the water out of Lake <laughs> Ontario, right? Which is great. I, I love that argument because they're like, oh, we want to you know, hug the trees. Right. But I want about 17,000 gallons of water just yeah. shooting at me when I'm showering. Jets on you at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I want a bidet. I want a heated seat. I want everything. It's like this. And, and listen, I'm not knocking it. I love it. 
Yeah. Like I totally, I think that's what the amount of time you spend in a bathroom, you should be getting all these creature For comforts, sure. man. Like, For I, sure. and you should be hiring people that know about them or at least hungry to know about them. Right. So you can learn about it. And I think that's what you want to be around. You want to be around a team that's like... Like-minded people. This yeah, is what's going sure. on in this bathroom. Like, this is what we have to pull off. And it's like, you guys get a spec book. It's like, that's not the way it was back in the day. It, it was literally a toilet, shower head, yeah. pole tester, sink. Right. Now it's just like, heads of glory, two sinks. Yeah. And then the toilet that's got all the bells and whistles, right? Yeah. You got any particular brands that you, you like working with that you've seen product? Like, I, it was just funny. And I know I'm going to have Sam, the plumber, on the show later on today. And I, I stopped by one of his job sites and he was showing me these toilets. And I'm not going to say the name, but I was like, well, who designed that, man? Like, that's not right. I will, I've got a, <laughs> well, one specific, I don't know if I should say it, but. No, no, don't say it, I but I'm just but like. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely ones that I like, you know, uh, kind of, uh I like Kohler. Yeah, you American can say the ones Standard, you like. I don't want to get into the arguments yeah, yeah, with who don't like. Yeah. Like those kind of things. Of course. Yeah, all those are safe, you know. They're good to install. But there's some that are like ridiculous designs and they're impossible to install. Like, you know. Exactly. They just don't know how to, um, I guess, was there like a disconnect between the engineer and the design team? Like how to put all this stuff? I don't know. But I also find that they're selling stuff like um, like toilets that are not like North American. Like they're from other places with like different size piping so like, true. You know, the hoses and everything yeah, and you so have to like true. retrofit everything it's such yeah. a pain right and then just because you can ship it and get it here across the world it doesn't mean that it can be installed correctly and then you right. have to find somebody because we obviously have our system here and then they have their system there yeah but now you're the homeowner's like well i found it on wayfair and i found yeah, it somewhere exactly. and i'm yeah, shipping it in and it's like notorious reputation of those yeah. it's just it's like a headache you get a, a shower valve for like a couple hundred bucks and then no, something goes funky with it. When are you ever going to get a part for it? You Not can't. accessible, no. You can It's going to be a nightmare. But then the thing is, the nightmare falls on your doorstep. Yeah. Now it becomes your responsibility, right? Right. How is, uh, I mean, are you focusing more on the custom side of things? Are you focusing more on the... I do a little bit of everything. Custom, renovations, new construction, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What do you like particularly these days? Mm. I mean, 10 years in the business, you got a good gauge of what... I mean, I, I love commercial. Commercials, I love it, uh, yeah. Why? It's just, uh, it's, first of all, it's bigger projects generally. Um, I, I like working with copper more than anything. It's always copper. And now right? there's press, right? So, <laughs> Has press gotten to the point where it's completely affordable? Like it makes sense that? I've, yeah. Like a okay. few years ago, I thought like yeah, at the point in it, it's at now, it's, it's not that. Because uh, when you factor in the labor aspect to how long, you know, you got a leaky joint and, you, might, you know, retest, drain the system, retest it. And every, I find it like, great. Well, five years ago, though. It was a different story, right? Yes. Five years ago, you sure. really had to just like take the hit and figure out, okay, is this really worth it at that right, point? Right, right. Yeah, five years ago, I mean, when I was, uh, at that time, it was just mainly for like emergency service. Like, yeah. you, you know, you got to yeah. throw in a shut off valve, the water's not turning off at the main, it's live, and yeah. like that kind of thing. And then like after that part, you're like soldering everything again, right? You think clients on the custom side are ever going to get onto the pro press train? On or which side, sorry? On the custom side. Resi. Yeah, I think they already are. They already Not they for are. the whole house. I no, mean, but, but there are, you're using it for you're sure. You're seeing it for the mechanical systems. Yeah. If you're going the boiler, yeah. you're always bringing in PEX lines at that point, but then you just configure to the press at that point. Yeah, yeah. But I guess are you also, it, to, to me, like, uh, listen, I'm not a licensed plumber. You guys are licensed plumbers. When I see a shower valve and I see a shower set up in all PEX, mm -hmm. it just looks Mickey Mouse to me. You right. know what I mean? It, and when I see it in copper... And if I see it in it's press, true. Yeah. it just, it looks proper to me. I, right. I get it that it's going to get covered. I get that it's going to be hidden from tile and all this other stuff. But I just, I just, I'm a copper guy. I've always been a copper no, guy. You're not wrong. You're right. Definitely the, the, the aesthetics of it, for sure. Um, it just looks like it's going to last. Right. I know that there's nothing, there's no issues with press. Like press is, the issue is at the moment. Right. When you're doing your test and you set it up, then you'll know exactly what the issue is yeah. at that point. But it's just like, will it ever fail down the line? Press? Not press, PEX. I mean, not, oh, PEX? Yeah. I, I mean, I've never had a call back from anything. I've I don't think it ever years, fails, so. man. If you're yeah. if you're crimping everything properly, it's all done. Yeah. Or if you've even used an opener or whatever it is, like, it's like, there's no failures. I've had, um, um, like, fittings that have gone bad in the past, actually, now that I think about it, yeah. On the PEX side? Like, they're crimped properly and everything, but for some reason they leaked. What would the be, like, did you find out on, on why would it have failed over it. time? Would it just been the the water, the way the water was, like, I don't know. Maybe a high concentration of something. No, that wouldn't really affect no, it. No, I don't know why. 
Sometimes there's recalls on some fittings and stuff, right? I mean, but the same thing happens with copper as well, right? Like For sure. eventually you might get, um, you know, the expansion contraction kind of thing and it might be too close to a certain nail or something like that and it might start yeah. nicking away at the copper and then all of a sudden it, right, you get a pinhole thing. at that point. So you, you just never know. And it's just, I, I always liked, like, you just got to be conscious of it. But I just, when I see copper set up, I know that it's more expensive. More expensive for material, more expensive for the labor, mm-hmm. more time. I sure. know it's all these more and more things, right? But it's just how many years have we been doing copper? Forever. Like we've been doing it for a long, long time yeah. since we changed over from regular pipe, right? right. But um, like press is pretty young, right? Press is no. Oh I no, sorry, not press. Uh, Pex. Pex. Pex is pretty young. I mean, I I know. Like I've done some repiping on houses, like you know the stuff that was recalled back in the day. What was it called? The Kytec. I, I remember that. That was that. Pex. I remember that. Similar yeah. stuff, right? But that's already like early two thousands are roughing in houses. So I mean, it is re- new compared to copper. But uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I th- I never had any like real. Like, Did you? Do, I was. I I, I actually misspe- uh, misspoke about the press. So how long's press been around? Press. I I don't even know the answer to that. But I know I'm pretty sure it was in, out in the nineties. Really? Rigid had it out. Yeah. Probably just for commercial applications, right? Probably. To save and their at that life. time, the fittings were probably like you know even more ridiculous. Like I can only imagine. Yeah, right? I couldn't imagine. Yeah. But, but I it, know it's like 25 years or something like that, for sure, at least rigid. It, it is kind of nice, though, when you um, crack open a nice pack out and, and all the press fittings are all there and it's just all yeah. organized and it's just like, it's almost like surgery. You yeah, know what I mean? Nice. Like you, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you, you see a tray that just taking the time and taking the pride, yeah. set it up. It just looks a lot better than just PEX fittings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. It does. It does. Well, the only thing, yeah, straight sticks, if I'm using PEX, it's only, I'm never using a roll. Roll that, You cannot even try to make it look good, right? Never, you know. Because the thing is, then you get the guys, I guess, who are just way too lazy and just go uh, coil it up and then stub it out for the toilet. Well, it's, it's, and now it's, you got like, you know. <laughs> yeah, I see that all the time in residential. It drives me nuts, The subdivisions, I knew. Like, and then you get the effort of some guy putting it on the sleeve. The, the 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 polished chrome plastic <laughs> sleeve on it, open. and I'm like half it's open because it's bending, and I'm like you're 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 dealing with two opposing forces here that are just not going to make this work. Right. So it's like it may just look cut it as low as you can. Yeah. Before. <laughs> it's just, and it's that's another gripe of mine is like I don't like stub outs on toilets coming out from the floor because I don't think there's a single manufacturer that specifies to sp- stub out from the floor. I think I they're always think so, they're, yeah. they're always stu- like they and oh. I know Kohler and I th- I'm pretty sure Toto, they give you the crosshairs. Yeah, they totally give you the crosshairs. It's always a certain distance from the center line of the toilet, exactly. and then it comes over to the left or right. Most of the times, left, left right? right yeah. yeah, but now you're you're dealing with toilets that you have to talk to the electrician. And you got to bring a GFI uh, to it yeah. and plug it in. And oh yeah, it's like it's just fancy. crazy, man. It's getting yeah. really really crazy, and it's just um, what are you learning more and more things from homeowners? Are they actually bringing some interesting things like interesting products to you outside of the ones that are challenging about you know getting a product yeah. here from wayfair and all of a sudden um, it's crappy i mean well yeah because at the end of the day they're they're the one choosing the fixtures that they want to be put in right so i'm getting introduced to it by them and then i'm doing my own due diligence on you know installation and rough and everything so but wouldn't it be i mean now i'm going to point at the homeowners wouldn't it make my much sense like homeowners for the most part choose a plumbing fixture aesthetically yes when I think you should be choosing it and speaking to someone regarding the function, mm-hmm. I want to know how that sprays. I want to know how it, you yeah. know, exports, right? And I want to know how it's going to last and I want to know how it's going to build up, how it's made and all this other stuff, right? I don't think people consider that at they all. They just care aesthetically. Yeah, as long as, you know, they'll, they're wanting, they're afterwards, after five years or whenever, when it's time to change something or, you know, that's when they're like, okay. But that's where you guys there. come in. Like, they yes. should be speaking to you guys going, have you installed a similar one to this? And what is the spray pattern like it? Like, how does it work? Will it? Will I be happy with it? But they don't generally have that conversation no, with you. No, no, Which no. is such a missed opportunity because they should be having conversations with you. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not knocking the designers at like that. But for the most part, the designers don't know. They just right. are basing it on aesthetic, put it out there. It you know all matches. Kitchen faucets I've put in and they're like, what is this? Like, where's the pressure? I'm like, well, if you look at the box, there's this green leaf here. It's a water saver thing. Like, I can't wash my dishes with this. I'm like, well, you choke. I don't know what to tell you. you know? Well, every plumber I know, including myself, that when I ever installed a, f- a kitchen faucet, is like, get rid of the friggin' reducer. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, pop it out. I don't care. Yeah. The purpose of a kitchen sink is to what? 
it's yeah. to use it. For I need sure. some force there, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I definitely want more force when it's like you, you go into a spray a spray pattern, right? Yeah. You definitely want to, and then also you want a, a long enough reach, right? Yeah. Which brings up another gripe of mine, where it's like uh, only the good plumbers, I think, think about the underside, the drain side of it, mm-hmm. leaving that little section where the actual hose yeah kind of the way for sure there's no obstruction because yeah. there's nothing worse than pulling it and then getting that speed bump because 100%. it's hitting the pipe you never right? bring your drain center of course yeah it drives me like, nuts that you're not thinking because i think i don't think there's a single client out there that's just asking for a regular standard laundry tub kind of or laundry sink faucet in a kitchen application where no. you don't have to pull out you don't have to pull down just rental units <laughs> yeah just rental <laughs> units but even rental units like i i mean i did one recently and and i was like um What's being offered on the market now is insane. They're offering not bad faucets that have pull downs or pull outs. Yeah. So it's like they're not crazy expensive. So you might as no. well throw it in a rental unit because yeah. you're going to make your tenant happy with it. Mm-hmm. They're going to appreciate it outside of like what you just said. Everyone's so used to that regular standard yeah, one, exactly. right? For maybe a few more bucks, you get a nicer one that has a pull out, pull down. You get them pretty cheap now. I, I, there's so many Amazon faucets and like, even Canadian Tire, like of all places, has like a whole. Th- it's crazy. Yeah, it's wild, yeah. So on the mechanical side, what are you focusing mostly on? What are, what are you getting clients that are asking for? It's still a, a forced air world, right? Everyone's always yeah. asking for that. You're getting, uh, I'd, I'd love to have the argument about the, the heat pumps. You're getting a lot of clients reaching out to you for the heat pumps? It's, uh, not too much. Okay. But yeah, sometimes, yeah. Are you going to see, I know that I, I was doing a show yesterday and I was talking to Tyler and he was like, his concern is the service and the maintenance of those heat pumps in the next few years. He's worried about that. It's going to be pretty dramatic. Yeah. Like he thinks that they're all being sold um, a package of goods that sounds kind of nice now, but later on it's just going to be service and maintenance attached to it, which is going to be a headache for the homeowner. It's like honestly like anything now, (laughs) right? Like nothing lasts like how it did before. Oh, it's just how it is, man. Like I just don't – it's kind of smart that – you get uh, washing machine manufacturers not giving you the rubber hoses anymore. I never liked rubber hoses. When I was always doing an install and I got a braided, washer, yeah. I always braided. For sure. I was like, braided lines are always the better line to go with. Like, you always heard these horror stories. I never had the horror story, but you always hear that these rubber lines, over time, they oh, just I've witnessed it, yeah. Oh, really, oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right, it's right it's serious, it, yeah. man. And then you got an open valve right there, and if you're not home... Can they come home from work? <laughs> you know... <sighs> They come to pull in their garage. I had this so the this one client, um, they um, the the laundry was right above the garage, and they come in and they open the garage door, and it's just water pouring out of their garage, and kind of like the roof's all falling down already. Because it's yeah. just water for that whole day, like it's yeah. just constant, yeah, right? For sure. Even a fridge line, like I did recently, this like a little pinhole in the poly lines that people put. See. I do braided lines for I know, that so too. So do I, but I, I service this kind of stuff, right? I know, and but I never understood the poly lines for those things. I know it's convenient; it's easy to run, yeah, chase but it, but it's such a they thin, wear out. So yeah, yeah. So I just I don't one kink in it. You push the fridge back, and it bends, and that's it, right? But then also, I'm 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 like I'm a fan of the Odie box to put a, a fridge ice line. Yeah, uh, supply line. Yeah, I use them all because you got yeah. a shutoff valve right yeah. there, right? So you don't have to go and shut off the system or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I mean, are there any other little perks that you see that you're doing? Like, well, the- now I'm doing so. I put the usually put that box behind the fridge, but I'm also running a separate line to underneath the kitchen sink. So yeah. there's a shut off, additional shut off there, so you don't have to pull out the fridge to Perfect. do it quickly, yeah. kind of thing, right? And it's also nice too. Like I'm also seeing uh, shut offs that are for hose valves, you know, bibs and things like that. You can put them underneath the sinks if you, you uh, kitchen yeah. sinks. You can actually if you manage it properly, design it properly. Oh, you can plenty have of room. You every, have to make plenty it nice. of room, yeah. and you can still fit your carriages in there. You can still fill your, your, your pull outs for your whatever you need to pull yeah. out, right? But I mean, that's where it's like you got an open slate. Like you got a nice carcass usually 36 inch 36, carcass yeah. which is big and i know that sinks are getting deeper and deeper but you still have a lot of space there that you can if you manage it properly it could be set up right mm-hmm. right so then that's where you guys come in to educate the client because the client just cares about the cabinetry they care about the sink that's another thing too with these deep sinks people don't want to change the roughing in the wall it's gonna work i'm like no it's not <laughs> you know because you, you, you were given a certain height or you were told a certain sink and all yeah. of a sudden you put the rough in it's for that sink. mind and Oh, we're going to go deeper. Six inches deeper, whatever it is. Like, You're breaking drywall. Yeah. You have to reconfigure all that at that yeah, point. Exactly. So back to the commercial. So you're loving the copper, uh, but it's all press? 
It's all not all press. No, no, you no, still solder. I still right? solder for sure. Yeah, I think it's important. Like, as if you're coming into the trade, like obviously learn soldering. Before the press is obviously no skill involved to that, right? But you, everyone should know how to solder if you're a plumber for sure. You're not always going to be able to. Right? There's but some it's good to have those skills, right? Cause oh, of course. You might come across a project where you have to take care of something like that. Yeah, but even like soldering, uh, you know, the drain, the drains. Like, and it's not water piping, but you got to be able to do that for commercial applications too, with the brass piping. And yeah. Stuff, so, yeah. Are you getting a lot of clients these days asking for softeners, reverse osmosis? All Depending these? on the area, but more, more, yeah, that and filters and yeah, yeah they're it's, conscious it's becoming of it, right? More popular, yeah. And at the minimum, it's like you got you're under the kitchen sink filter system for they got their separate faucet for drinking and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But are they are those filters clogging up fast these days? Because it depends where you are. I've yeah. seen them pretty bad. Because just the way the water is being treated, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially like up north, like uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I guess I guess, I guess your um, um, clients are being a little more savvy. They're doing the Google, you know, research. Yeah, some and some people don't even know. And then like you go do a shut, you shut their water down, and then when you turn it back on, they've got like brown water coming out of their faucet for like thirty seconds. They're like, "What is that?" <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> "Where's the res? Where's that coming from?" From well, it's because the water is not filtered first of all, but it it coats the inside of the water pipe. So when the water's shut down and, you, and it's drained out, and you fill the system back up, the it, pipe yeah, up. exactly. You've got all that crap coming out. Yeah, oh, that's back like a hundred years ago. That's what it'd been like, right? Yeah, for sure. Where do you think plumbing's going these days, mechanical wise? We're going like I'd, I'd love to hear you say that more and more homeowners want to go radiant and they want to go hydronics and they want to go that route because I think it's a healthier way to heat your For home. For sure, I know it's a more expensive way to yeah, heat, the but cost, it's a healthier yeah. way to eat, right? Like I just I don't. It makes sense to me, and then you just got to figure out the AC part of it, which, in my opinion, you just go a small unit. You do a small furnace and take it from the attic, I guess, and take care of that and just run the uh, smaller lines, right? That, right. That would make the more, like, that That just makes more sense. Yeah, more efficient, but like you said, more cost involved initially. But, you know, it's not not everyone's going to do it. Not, it's not in everybody's budget, but hopefully it leans that way, just like everything is kind of, you know, press, for example, it's getting cheaper as we go kind yeah. of thing. So hopefully it's the same idea with that. Like, what are we talking about, Johnny? Like, we're twice the price kind of thing if you yeah. went it is it starts so all of a sudden you got a line item you're doing a new build instead of spending 50 grand on your hvac system you're going to be spending 100 grand on your hvac system right yeah i know it's a hard pill to swallow but i just like I, when i've done jobs for clients and i speak to them later or uh, afterwards you know the kids don't have nosebleeds the kids don't have health problems they're not sure. coughing all the time the, the family has fewer you know flu s That's seasons huge. yeah like because think about it you're just moving volumes of air between each room in the entire house and in the winter months that house is sealed and if you're if you're actually not maintaining your erv or hrv you're not circulating the air properly in that house so all of a sudden it's just basically a petri dish at that point right that's why you get sicker. So it's like, do you want many more sick days in your house or do you want more healthier days in your house? Right. That's where that extra cost comes in. But I know it's hard. It's hard because then they can't get the wolf stove. They right. can't get this or yes. can't get upgrade that yes. or all this other. I get it. It's all money, right? Yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. But are you getting a lot of clients, Johnny, that are um, questioning the dollars? Are they saying that construction is just getting too expensive these yes. days? Yes. It's happening, right? It's eh? happening. How yeah. do you navigate that conversation? Some people get it and some people don't, you know, like you got to explain to them. Like the thing is nobody complains about everything else going up. But when it comes to the construction, you know, the trades and doing these certain things, that's when it's a big deal. But, you know, it's just a, it, everything goes up. So, you know, should accept it kind of thing, right? Did you, did you roll with the punches during the you know the covid years where you know a lot of things were going up but a lot of trades people didn't increase their labor rates yeah. the same way that everybody was increasing everything else well i had people you know repeat um customers call me back and they're like the material pricing was like was ridiculous and you try to justify that to them like i'm telling them like i'm not i didn't even increase my labor charge right it was just a material increase and they were not believing me to the point like kind of thing but you're showing them no, here's my supplier like, we'll buy a two by four right now you just look at it <laughs> yeah yeah you like know? but it, it wasn't even the two like it's for you guys it was it was like the copper the lengths of copper and everything. just valves, just like everything, like tripled at that time. Yeah, or something. even yeah. all your 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 just your material that you needed just to do the job, right? Yeah, I can only assume. I don't know, but did, did all the price of the the tools and everything did that all go up as well too? 
Like, were you getting? Yeah. Oh, I remember. Um, I was buying some Milwaukee stuff, and it, I was getting. I was getting told that they're so Milwaukee at that time. They had to increase their pricing because. Um, I was because what they wanted to make more money. From, yeah, yeah, <laughs> because the Canadian dollar or something. I don't know. January first at that time, it was like they're going to increase. I just this picture much them in a meeting, just to trying make, to figure out how, how can we come up with a reason why we need to justify this increase because we really don't have a, a reason. But let's just justify it. Right, right. But that's not the well, way because to, our Canadian dollar is so low. That's what I was told. Can really? We, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So why didn't we have that conversation when the Canadian dollar was so high and we were at par and we didn't see a change in the pricing on things? Right. We, we were it's still true. paying the same price. Right. So it's like, oh, okay, it doesn't work that way, but it works this way. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. It's capitalism. That's all. For sure. Is. Everyone was just taking advantage They're of it. They're good at it. <laughs> I, I mean, I saw lengths of copper go through the roof. I was just like, this is insane, man. Like insane. Like it wasn't just a lumber. No, no, it, it was everything. You guys were getting hit hard. Yeah. Electricians were getting hit hard. It was yeah, the scarce. Spool, the spool yeah. of a fourteen two was absolutely insane. You almost needed to get AOC on it. Like it was just ridiculous. Like, are you kidding me? I just want one spool of electrical wire. Yeah, it was bad. And they were and they were when they were in, they were gone. Yeah, like, everyone was taking them, so it was like a shortage at the same time. It's right? the first time that I started going to certain big box stores and they have them all locked up. Yeah, it's like you. You telling me that someone's actually grabbing a spool, like oh yeah, of, of, of fourteen two, and they're putting it underneath their jacket and they're yeah, walking you go out to here. Plumbing supply where they go, they lock up all their mixing valves and all that kind of stuff. Now, like Home Depot and stuff. Really? And if I go, like, if I'm doing work in the off hours and the supplier's not open, if I go to Home Depot, like all the mixing valves for the hot water tanks, those are all locked up with a bunch of other stuff too. Yeah. So you, you're one man shop? No, no, I got uh, one guy working for me right now. Younger guy. And I sub some work as well. Yeah. Okay, and he's a younger guy. Young guy, yeah, okay. twenty one. How'd you find him? Uh, I did work at his house, and uh, he worked for another contractor. Um, I mean, he wasn't happy there. Kept in touch with him over like six months, and then he asked me if I want to take him on, and yeah, so I did. So he's going through the apprenticeship yep. hours now, all right? And he's doing well. How long yeah. has he been with you? He's only been with me since uh, November. Okay. Yeah. But he's great, yeah. No complaints at all. He's good. He's learning. So you kind of lucked out. He came huh? into it with experience. Yeah. And he's a hard worker. He doesn't complain about anything. You know, like he's he's good. He wants to learn. He's eager to learn, and that's really noticeable. Like especially with you know kids now this generation, they, they don't. You know, they but don't you guys it. have to deal with it. I don't have to deal with it. Like I just I hear it. Yeah. But it's yeah. challenging. You're you're running a business, and then also you're educating. You're teaching. Yeah, yes. and then you're trying to you like you lucked out finding that one guy. I did, yeah. I mean, if you had to go through the whole Indeed route and try to find employees, oh, it was going to be more I'm hearing it from other guys, like contractors I deal with on a regular basis. Yeah. It's impossible to find guys. That's that. I don't know. I got lucky, so I'm not complaining. But is it impossible to find the guys, or is it impossible to keep the guys? Because they feel sorry, that, it's easy to find somebody. Yeah, right. But whether they fit your business exactly, and, or they fit the industry, right? Those are two different things, right? Yes. But a lot of that, I guess a lot of these young guys think that this industry is just glamour. It's just everything's all just Instagram glamour. Everything's just like a rock star right. plumber, yeah. rock star mechanical guy. And all of a sudden you're like, you, you can do this, you can do that. You're just like, it's all perfect. It's all glitz and glam. And I'm like, it's not. You're going to be in the shit, man. You're going to yeah, just yeah. like, there's going to be some there's bad days. For sure. Cold days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Really awkward positions on trying to do your service or what you have to do. Like, it's just going to be a challenge, man. Mm -hmm. And you just got to accept it. as just part of it. Either... Step up to it or don't. One or the other, right? Yeah, no. It's, it's a really physical world. You know, we we do some back back breaking stuff sometimes. And yeah, it's just a part of the job, right? It's got to get done. I like that you brought that up because it's like I see a lot of you younger guys, and I was guilty of that too, right? You just think yeah, that you're you're super men and women, right? And you think that you're physically strong, and I can handle this, and I can do it over and over, but. As a specific trade, when you're constantly doing the same movement over and over, yes. you are, not realizing it, damaging parts of your body. For sure. And you need to be aware of that. You just need to be conscious of it that it might be causing long-term damage down the road. Yep. And that's the reason why when I was growing up, I saw my dad and other older trades, they move a little bit slower. They sure. walk a little bit differently. It's because their bodies have been beaten up, right? Are you guys, I'm assuming you younger guys are conscious of this, man more conscious now yeah you're in my early it. 20s yeah. I, I wasn't like i felt invincible now i'm like starting to feel stuff you know and now i'm like even like now i i, I will not get on the ground unless i have like my knee pad set up yeah. and stuff like that because yeah. i feel it i never did before because it didn't bother me i'd be on my knees doing rough ins and concrete all day long i'd be fine 
no, I, no way I can do that now. No. Man, speaking about a knee pad, the other day I was just doing some work around the house, and then I went down on my knees, and I had the knee pads in the pants already, and then I was feeling something. Like, it was digging, mm-hmm. digging in there, but it was sharp, right? And I was like, man, something's in there. I had to take out the knee pad out. It's a small piece of glass, man. Uh-huh. Tiny, tiny piece of glass was just inside the actual knee pad, and it was just digging right into my oh. knee. And I was like, this is crazy, man. I'm yeah. not going to continue this. I took it out, and it was perfectly fine. But, you know, I agree with you, man. Knee pads. All, there's times where I'm, like, even cleaning the house, and I got my work pants on it because, like, you're just on your knees cleaning For it. And sure. I'm like, this is actually good cleaning work wear. Yeah. You know, that, that's 100%. what you need, right? It just it makes it safe. Knees are important. Yeah. Feet. Footwear, yeah, your eyes and your, your ears. eyes, your hearing, yeah. Like I had um, shoulders had an accident as an apprentice. Um, it was we were I don't know what job we were on, but we were grinding all the time. And then uh, it just so happened that one of the guys at this place we were working at, he had that um, that it's like where your ear rings constantly; it doesn't it's go away. Tendonitis, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was from him working in a factory without earplugs for like it forever right and he's like this will basically cause the same thing this high you know volume you know. so now i'm like super conscious of that that's kind a of critical stuff. one man yeah, yeah i tell guys bare minimum have the the foam inserts bare minimum, bare minimum yeah. ideally get the bigger bulkier ones right because they literally will protect your ears man yeah and you should be wearing them as the first day you're on a job site you should 100%. be wearing them. I don't care if you don't look cool or whatever it is. Just pretend that you're wearing Beats or something like that. Yep. Simple as that. But those things are going to save your hearing because later on in your ears, you are going to have that ringing, that constant ringing. Yep. When there's silence in your life, you're going to hear that constant ringing, yep. which is going to be so irritating for you, man. Yeah, and I, I swear my hearing's affected because that wasn't a part of my uh, protocol in my early year, like you know. And you're noticing it right now at your age? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my wife, she'll say, talk, talk, she's talking to me, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Like, are you deaf? <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> maybe, maybe she uses kind of construction terms or something like that. Then you might hear it or something yeah, like maybe. that. Mix in a word or two or something <laughs> like that. Wrench or hammer, yeah, pipe. Okay. Yeah, that, like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I heard you. I understand yeah. what you said. Slope? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you want me to slope the cake a little bit? Yeah. No, okay. All right. I can do that. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just, there is, I mean, there is a toll. And I think, you think part of that attributes to the kids not wanting to get into the industry because they don't want to beat their bodies up? They want something. hundred percent. It has to be, right? hundred percent. Like, okay, it's not, there's, like I said, there's days where you're going to have those hard days, but like a majority of the time, like, you know, it's, they don't even want to do that part, let alone like the hard stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to get, how do you draw someone in for that kind of thing? Because the trades, there's good money to be made and everything, but... I mean, sometimes that's not enough, like, to, you know, get someone on the road to it. Good money is not enough. Like, no debt and good money and able to buy a car and a house within the next decade of your life. For sure. Yeah. These aren't good things on this grocery list. I don't understand. Like, the kids are not seeing this as potential. I know. It's still, it is not, it's not for everybody, but still, like, they're, I don't know, I find that, like, I don't know, as we go on, it's, like, less and less guys that are, you know, willing to do it, even though it's a great you know, industry. I think, actually... It's getting easier, too, now with everything, with all the new tools and everything, right? So, we'll see. It is probably getting easier, safer. Safer, for sure. Um, but I guess they still are balancing the entrepreneur spirit. Right. I think that they're too eager and hungry to become you, the business owner, too soon. Right. I think they get, they need a yeah, few bumps and bruises. Yeah, they don't want to earn stripes. Yeah. Wanna, yeah. You know, like it, even when I started as an apprentice, like I didn't touch stuff for like a while. It was just like, you know, you're grabbing coffee, you're making sure the material's there, you're handing, you know. But you were absorbing the knowledge on the site. Yes. Even though you weren't in it and doing the work, yes. you were at least aware of the steps involved because well, you were watching. Yeah, the awareness is what gets you when you level up now where you're allowed to do yeah, stuff yeah now you've got to already be kind of ready to do it versus yeah. being told kind of thing you know what i mean yeah. so yeah it's just but i just feel that they're too eager to get right to the top of the well, the food chain right yeah yeah like you know i've had guys complain to me like you know i don't want to break the concrete i want to um that's not a plumber's job i want to uh i want to lay the pipe I'm not uh, breaking the concrete. it is a plumber's job <laughs> i know i know digging a trench is a plumber's job i know it's all part of it yeah you know, and sometimes you're on a big job you're doing that like maybe all week yeah right before you can even start the plumbing underground so Re- it's like, removing the dead squirrel out of the vent stack is the plumber's job for sure <laughs> it's like whatever you find in the mechanical duct work whatever the kids threw down there that's the that's the mechanical's job it's just that's part of your job it's part of your scope who are you going to call you're going to call the electrician to come in you're going to call the framer to come in yeah. no no it's part of your trade that's what it is right yeah 
but they don't want I, I know you're talking about they don't yeah. want they want to get to the top of the mountain and they get frustrated you know why can't i do this i'm like man like you can't d- dive right into it. You got to like get a grasp of things, kind of see what's going on. Like, you know, just because you're not doing it doesn't mean you're not learning. hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, when I started out, I was asking myself, why is he taking this fitting? Like, why am I giving this? And, but at the, and then you get to the point where you're giving him stuff before he even asks you, cause you know what's next. Yep. And then the step after that, okay, you can try it by yourself now. Yep. Right. Yep. So there's, there's a whole fly on the wall part of this industry that you need to just sit back not necessarily, you know, just, you know, like and ask all these questions of the, of the people that are working. There's a whole part of it that you just need to figure out what the on-site etiquette is all about, right. how the procedures are all unfolded. Like there's systems in place on how you guys have set up. Like it's always, I'm always fascinated about how I see a van set up, how I see a business set up, how I see how I always love being on site first and last because I get to see how you guys roll in, how you guys roll out. Right. And, and you'll see if you pay attention to this, there's patterns. For there's sure. ways on people have figured out how to be efficient doing those things. Mm-hmm. And I think those are lessons that are quietly learned. You need to sit back and just pay attention to how so-called gypsies come in yeah. and just start the process. And it's always the best to experience like the rough, you know, when you guys first show up, clean slate, you just got timber to deal with. Yeah. And then you're trying to figure out, okay. How am I going to run this? Yeah. How am I going to roll this all out, right? And that takes the skill set. And I don't think that if you just run up the mountain, you won't get that information. Yeah, that's the that's the next step after you're, you know, you know what you're doing to design what you're going to do. Yeah. For sure. And then eventually it would be given to you. Because right. if you're showing the way that you're showing the initiative and you want to learn, in between getting the coffees, in between sweeping things up, in between cleaning the van, cleaning things, like just always staying tidy, in between all that stuff, you'll eventually be given the opportunity from someone that's senior of you, and they'll go, listen, you want to you map this one out? You want to take care of this one? For sure. You take care of this one. You, you run it out. You here's a red it. marker. That's right. You go. You, you tell me where you want to run this one. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, you're given the opportunity. Now, you ain't going to do it as fast as the person no. that's asking you to do it, right. but one day you will. That's the beauty of the trades, yeah. right? That eventually happens Just that repetition, way. right? Yeah. The more you do it, the better you get. It's the ones that, the, it's the young ones that look at this industry and this trade. It's just a job and I just come in and I'm just running a pipe. Those guys will never last. Yeah, like if you think it's just anything, then you don't understand the opportunities that are attached to this. You just don't get it. Right. Which you maybe for me, not for when you. you're looking for someone, you're rolling like you're rolling the dice. Like if someone's available and they're like you know, let's say licensed or whatever, like good guys aren't. They're taken. They're yeah. not. They're not waiting to get yeah. hired. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it, it's like a you got to sort through all that. But there is a smaller pool to select from, right? Right. You're not like not. We're getting more fewer and fewer people coming into the industry, right? Right. So it's hard to. It's challenging to uh, to get more kids interested in being a part of this right i don't know what's not uh like like you said you start out you make money you don't have debt you know you, it's you not the math degree that's not gonna the math serve you at all the math isn't selling them like if you explain the math to them the financial math they don't get how valuable that is like you can go out and, and do your whole career and choose a different industry and go to education and spend six figures on your education, carry that debt, which is not, you know, forgiven. You have to pay it eventually. It doesn't matter right. if you're 60 years old, you still have to pay. It's going to be digging away at your heels. Right. right? Um, but then like the whole idea, when you talk to these young kids that are starting out and they're hungry and they're go-getters, they're driving, maybe not necessarily a brand spanking new truck, but they're driving a relatively good new vehicle ish. Yeah. Right. And, and that's what they're rolling around in. And then their next goal is I got to look at a house. Right. I got to figure out semi detached, whatever, condo, something like that. Yeah. And you're in your 20s having these conversations when the majority of people in this, on this, on this country, in this country, they're in their 30s and they're yeah, saying, the, I'm the, not going to be able to afford it. The period. average age now is 36 years old for to buy a house. Isn't that wild? And a lot of them are not even choosing a car. They just think that they're going to live in the core and they'll either Uber it or they'll just like bicycle it or just yeah, public transit. Even then I have a friend that does like the, you can rent a car for a day. If yeah. You do all that zip, zip cars car. or whatever. That's right. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. But that makes no sense. Man. Like, what, weren't you, when you were 16, weren't you hungry? I'm going to get my license. I, that was my the first thing I, I need my license. Yeah. I need my license. Driving school, license M- or G2 right away. Yeah. Like, but it's not, today's generation is not interested in that. No, I know kids that don't even have their license. They're like 19. But you old. need that to be a trade. Like if you want to get the trades, I mean, 
if you got a system of how to get onto public transit and get to the job site, I great. did it. I started out. That's how I through did. public transit. Yeah. I wow. Was, I was getting to work like on sites. I was like on the bus at like four thirty in the morning. I was going everywhere. I didn't have a car yet. Yeah, that's how I started out. Just bring a tool bag or something like that? Just like minor At the things? time, no, I would leave my tools in the truck. Okay. And then I would just like get to the site or I would like meet my foreman at the time and he would, you know, go. I'd just get to the shop or go directly to the site, whatever was easier. And yeah, yeah. yeah. But the kids nowadays have to realize that if you're going to get into construction, it's not always in the same place. It moves around because yeah. you're building, building. It's possible. It just depend, depends if you want to do it. Like I had a guy working with me. Um, like he would have to go through multiple, like two municipalities to be able to get to the site. Like he lived at like, um, actually we were doing the Cineplex in Mississauga. He went from Scarlet and Eglinton all the way to like Oakville border, Winston Churchill. Whoa. Every single day. How long did that take him? Two and a half hours. Each way. Each way, yeah. Five hours he's spending to get to the job site. But he did it. He didn't have a car. And he did it. So it goes to show if you need to do, if you value your job. You have to do it. You're going to do it no matter what. Yeah, you got to figure it out. Yeah. I mean, the transit system isn't the greatest, but at least there's a way that you can get. He was an older older guy. He was like, you know, he was a man. He's not a kid. You know what I mean? So he's got bills. Uh, Someone who lives at home with their parents might not necessarily have the same, you know, drive. But they just dismiss it like I, I'm not going to achieve that, so I'm not even going to bother trying it then. So what's the point of that? That makes no right. sense, man. Yeah. When you're missing a whole opportunity where you could be making six figures in your first year of working in the trades, if you get the if you're hungry enough, you get the right ideas and you meet the right people, you can get to those numbers. For man. sure. Then then from there you can start figuring out what you want to do. Whether you want to run your own business, you want to partner with somebody, you want to grow from that point, you want to become a teacher, something like that. Whatever uh, you can yeah. be educated, right? Yeah. So many options. I'm seeing a lot more. Trades, like I think the next show that we're doing is with Aaron from Expert Plumbing, and he's actually setting up a school now in his workshop, and he's and he's planning on doing that kind of stuff. And I'm like, he's doing it now. He's got like every Friday, yeah, every Friday yeah, or something yeah, like which that. I, I, I which totally respect. That. It's yeah. amazing because he sees that he's just given opportunity. He's seen that it's the huge kids, value yeah, they, yeah, the kids need this. Nobody else is offering this, so he has to set, kind of set this up so if he can do it. And he's in one part of the you know the city, right? So he's further out in Hamilton area. But it's like those are the things, those are the companies that you need to find. But I guess as a young potential trades person coming into the industry, just scour the web and scour social media and listen to podcasts. And exactly. Like the information's out there. You just got to take the well, time. You look for it. Yeah. yeah find it's it. there. Drive around. Well, if you're not driving, take the bus or whatever. But there's job sites everywhere. And don't be nervous to walk on the job site. Have your boots on. At least have a lid with you. I remember when I got my first job, I was always told, don't like apply. Go in and see the person face-to-face. It'll go a lot further. For sure. It'll yeah, go a lot it's further. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I ever hired anybody off of a resume. I always hired people when I met them and I spoke with them. Yeah. And I just talked. I go, let's walk around the job site. Let's just have a conversation. Walk and talk it. And if you get a good vibe from that person, I was like, okay, come back tomorrow. Let's get going. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. I think people put too much emphasis on having this piece of paper that says that you have the skill sets to do this and i'm like in construction i don't think it works that way right i think you need to show that you're hungry enough to want to do it and then i'm going to give you the opportunity and then you show me if you're hungry to do it yeah simple as that your true colors always come through you can you know some people fake it (laughs) for as long as they can right I'm, i'm hearing more of those faking stories and i'm like how do these guys just have the balls to do this where they just kind of go in and lie i think they think that as soon as they get their foot in the door it's just like okay i'm in now it's like no, you can get out too. <laughs> you could, right? you, could, you could be asked to get out, right? Yeah, like yeah. You could be told to get out. Right. There's different ways. Like Johnny, what are you like? Are you thinking about expanding a lot in the next little while? Yeah. You gonna, yeah, really, yeah. yeah. So that means basically you're gonna go down the employee yes. search route. Yeah. Which is gonna be challenging and for frustrating sure. for you as a business owner because obviously you ain't gonna get all perfect apples at that time. No. So you're gonna have to deal with ups and downs and probably lost revenue. Yeah. Because you're going to have to fix certain things. Things weren't done correctly. You're anticipating all that or you think it's all just, it's all going to be well, like. I go into it optimistic, but uh, I'm also going to accept whatever comes, right? You know, it's just a part of it. You want valuable, you want good quality things. You got to look for it, vet everything, and then, you know, make sure you're on the right path. So, But I guess it's the one thing because I, I have a lot of respect for you guys in this industry where you guys are not afraid to speak to each other as business owners. 
right? You're you're not looking at each other as competition. Not and when, when I talk about that, I talk about the top three. I talk about the mechanical, the plumbing, and electrical trades, yeah. right? Um, you guys are not afraid about that. But the one thing you guys can't do, it's the employee pool. Right. You guys are all having the exact same problem. Yes. Finding people, hanging on to people. You get the occasional dick out there that's trying to poach. Right. You know what I mean? So you find a good guy or good girl, and all of a sudden they'll try to poach that person from you, which is a different kind of person, different kind of right. business owner, which you don't want to deal with. It's just, it's shadiness at that level. But that's the one thing that you guys can't do is, like, you guys are all stuck in this search for employees. Like, you guys would, everybody I've spoken to, I think, would grow if the, the kids were there. No they doubt. would expand their businesses right away if the kids were there to expand the business. Right. Well, you got to deal with not only the kids, now with the ratios, right, too. You got to find licensed guys equivalent to your apprentices you bring on. Which is another fiasco, right? I know. Like, I don't, they should bring it back to the way it was, right? Because that's how it grew then, no? Right. So how do you deal with that? You, I guess you could speak to politicians, but they don't know anything about construction. I don't know. I wouldn't. Their hard hat's always clean. The shovel's always clean. <laughs> the suit's like... I don't understand. You know what? Why do they show up on job sites with suits to do sound like ribbon ceremony bullshit thing? Like, I don't get that, man. I have a little bit of respect and like show up with like they throw on the vest on, eh? That vest that still has the creases on it. (laughs) I'm like, man, you know what? If you've done this so many times and you and you really care about this industry, we're at CMPX, so everyone's like, doesn't matter. But if you if you really respect this industry, then you know what? Walk into the bar properly. And have a little bit of respect for the people that are actually providing a, a living for their family and doing a service, right? Like, I, I, I laugh when I see those photos and the crease safety vest. I laugh at that shit. I'm like, yeah, you're like, you're just like that assistant. Here you go, sir. Here you go, ma'am. Here you go. And I'm like, this is just a joke, man. Yeah. Like, I just, unfortunately, yesterday here, you know, Ford was here and he was doing the, the ribbon. And I was just like, this is ridiculous, man. I don't, there's no respect, not from the industry, right? But I I get it. He's getting respect from the unions. He's getting respect from other big players. But then again, there are also suits with folded up safety vests. Exactly. Which is not, you're not speaking our language at that point, right? I'm sorry, but you're not speaking the language. And I think you should be speaking the language. I think you should have a lot more respect for the people that are providing such valuable skill set for this country. Every country's built that you, you get rid of trades people, you get rid of like the country dies. For sure. Simple as that, right? So you just, you, why don't we just see everybody on the same level playing field here? So, I mean, next ribbon cut is like, show up in workwear, show up in boots, show up in unfolded. Still going to have the and, creases, but. No creases, <laughs> man. Iron that shit out before or, or wash it or use it, get it dirty or something like yeah. that, man. I don't fucking know, but it's hard for me to hand that. I can respect it. Out, you guys are like in a heartbeat. I could talk to somebody in trades like in two seconds and know that you guys are hardworking individuals, right? So I have respect for that. But a guy in a suit, I have a hard time with it, man. Unless it's someone that I know, right? You shake their hand and you know that they're coming and they're just... Because trades people clean up well as well. For sure. Right? That's the thing about it. But it's just like the politicians are dictating how we can grow our business. Right. When they shouldn't be. No, not at all. We should be dictating how we're going to grow our business. I keep saying that. You, you want to grow this country? Ask the tradespeople. They'll tell you exactly how yeah, to grow yeah, this country. They're limiting you for sure. 100%, yeah. right? I mean, I guess that from their perspective, you're not going to have enough teachers for people learning or whatever, but it's not like that. It's not like they got it all wrong. Well, all the trade teachers that I've spoken to, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm close to getting some teachers from Conestoga get onto the show as well too, they're in the same pickle man like they're they're seeing the kids that are coming out and and also the 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 fall off rate like you know we had robert schrader recently from central tech and he was just telling me about the amount of kids that drop out is that right and i'm like that's like that's heart-wrenching to hear that because there's got to be something going on in that kid's life it could be a variety of reasons whatever it could be the personal situation it could be what have you whatever it is but every time that one drops off that's like lost man like that's just not one that's several at that point right and i just i feel bad because all the government really cares about is just pointing the finger at how many people are getting in and i think that forget about that finger i want to see you guys pointing a finger at how many people are staying in right i want to know who's in their second third who's the one that's looking for new employment new opportunities who's the one that maybe wants to get into a different sector who's the one that also is going to bring more kids for themselves right like there's nothing to stop a 21 22 year old to speak to their circle of friends and go listen i got two buddies i want to come in 
you know, unfortunately, they want to be electricians, but I want them to come in, right? <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't matter, man. Trades is still a trade. It's what it's value, right? But that's, I think we're we are responsible for building the industry ourselves. Hundred percent. Not the politicians. I'm sorry no. to say, man, because they're we know best anyway. Clueless, right? Yeah, they have no idea. No, well, that's it. Anything else you want to share before we get close to wrapping it up? Nothing on the top of my head. No, nothing. <laughs> How's the year looking for you so far? Good? Oh, it's really busy. Busy, huh? Oh, yeah. 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 Just yeah. dealing with I clients. I got to work after this. <laughs> really? You going right to the job? Not right away. I'm no, gonna but you're going to you're gonna walk the floor a bit? For sure. Yeah. And check it out. So, yeah, no, it's all good. Thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, and thanks the, for having me. doll booth here. Yes. And, and Thomas has been great to set this up. And I always like having the shows and, and, and shooting the shit on the show and talking it. So yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm glad that they did this and gave us a little bit of yeah. square footage here to do it. So for sure. Uh, and it's good to see you again, you man. Too. And thank you so much for being on the show there. And then come back anytime you want to bring back your guy and we'll do another show and we'll yeah. talk about your business more he's on his way here oh, is he coming here too yeah, as well he's, he's, yeah he's, first time as well yeah man i can't believe this is like i know but you knew about it right yeah i did yeah. you just never had an opportunity I've been busy i yeah i was either working or you know something like it's that, a good show just do the zigzag go back and forth and then yeah. just, just uh talk to all the brands and see what's going on man Awesome. Okay, Brent. Uh, what's the information again? Share it again. It's uh, Instagram is Brento Plumbing Inc. Yeah. And uh, my website's brentoplumbing.ca. And then the email. Uh, John at brentoplumbing.co. That's it, man. So, guys, everybody check them out. Check them out on, online and reach out to them. If you've got a job going on, whatever, check them out. And then uh, awesome. enjoy the show, man. Thank you. Thanks, Johnny. I really right. appreciate it, man. All right. Okay, we're out of here.